Sailing Yes Let's Episode 4, Hanging Out in Queen Charlotte Sound. Finally got around to sticking the name on properly. Testing a new um, 24 volt outboard, 86 pounds. It's less than twice as strong as ready. It feels way more powerful. Just judging from the wake, level 3 is actually pretty close to level 5 on the other one. Let me get the anchor up and show me how fast it goes. It didn't make the boat go really a lot faster, but it was a lot more powerful and had the capacity to push the boat through you know more waves and a bit more headwind and so on so well worth well worth it i couldn't install the upgrade yet because i couldn't change my whole system to 24 volts without some more equipment but it was a very good test run i've been making modifications to the boat so I now have two main sheets. Um, this is an alternative system to having a traveller. So that pulls it this way, that one to the other side. If you want to tighten it down, you sheet it to where you want it and then you pull the, the, the leeward side down. And then this second pulley here, that's the fine control. So this gives you four to one. This one gives you eight to one. If I had eight to one on this main one, I would need to spend a couple hundred dollars on pulleys and couple and a lot more rope as well. And you'd always be pulling. Um, I'm just experimenting with that. I haven't seen anyone else set their thing up like that. The, this rope here, that's just so that the main sheet doesn't need to be quite as long. It's going okay. Been anchored here a couple of days. Just the anchors off the front. And then there's a line tied to shore to keep me in the good spot. Pretty it's pretty um sheltered here. Yesterday you could hear all these trees like blowing in the wind, but it wasn't very windy here. Lots of flash batches, but uh, no one else is home. Just me. I found this very nice little bay, not far off the main channel. That was the ferry wake. This bay is uh, quite shallow. See the bottom? See the bottom? Uh, it's like a meter and a half. Good thing I wasn't anchored all the way over there. A nice bay except with one or So on the jib, I have a double purchase. That lets me get it pretty tight with just muscle and then um, really tight with the winch. These winches are only single speed. So you know, even with this leverage, when it's really blowing, it's um, pretty hard, pretty hard to pull it tight. And I kind of suspect that these sails are actually much a bit baggier than they should be. Can't really get them flat. I can't, so it's difficult to really shoot them in. Um, the other sails it comes with, so, so I'm just going to have to make the most of them for now.
I'm going to clean tail this out in a couple of weeks now. It's time to go around the Polaris. That's the, over the hill, or around the corner. Well, the plan was to have a tailwind. To easily get out into the sounds, but that doesn't happen. Um, but that there is Tory Channel. Getting past that means we no longer have to worry about the ferries. We're on our way. Now we're cruising. The forecast was southerly, but the you know there's really big hills around here everywhere, so the wind tends to bend and blow down whatever blow one direction or the other down every channel. Looks like it's gonna be really light wind. May or may not make it to Dolores Sound this week. It's not very far but I'm engineless so gotta get a wind. 95% engine loss. After a couple of hours of looking at the sail, I noticed that this bottom panel here had this curve in it that was basically creating the bag because the bottom was really tight and then this bit was sort of loose. And then I thought, what if I just create some more space down here? So I took the ring off there and so now it's got a bit of space to move. And then there was a tension wrinkle coming from here. So I popped out the um, plastic shackle and put uh, um, put some bicycle tube there instead. Now the sail's quite a lot flatter. Not really, not still not very flat. Like on my other boat, you can crank the sail and make it really flat. So yeah, I think this is still not flat enough, but it's much flatter than it was. And uh, you might also notice that there's a couple of these that I've left out. That's on purpose. That's so I can pull down and um, put reefs in without having to take any um, sliders out of the track. The wind is blowing basically the opposite direction of the forecast wind. So when Captain Cook first came to New Zealand, he sat around this area and one thing he did was go onto this island and raise the British flag and claim the whole thing for New Zealand, oh, for the British Empire I mean. And, uh, but like, he didn't go up on that island. So, because, uh, you know, there were people already living there and they uh, if they saw him go to the top of the hill and then do some sort of, cast some kind of magic spell, they might have been like, um, what's, what are you, what are you doing? Uh, yeah, so apparently, so really this should be New Zealand, this island. Or this should be something else. Actually, it was this even smaller island, Motuara, not the island I was pointing at. Long Island. The wind eventually came right, and even the sun came out a little bit, just about around this point, and uh, then we're going to have the wind mostly behind us. Support a fish. And we're actually sailing pretty fast. Since we're sailing downwind, you can barely feel it. Like, it feels like no wind at all. Like, it feels like three knots of wind, so. We're going pretty close to the wind speed. Cape Jackson. So you see we're about to come to some big waves. There will be the, that means the tide is against us. Whoa. Whoa. made it into Polaris and anchored in Kitu Bay. More next episode.